So welcome to Wimborne Road for the second leg of this all-important Elite League playoff final. And uh, the bubbly's ready, the trophy's here ready, this is what they're riding for. And of course, uh, we've got Paul uh, Pirates and the Bellevue Aces starting all square after the first leg. There's a bumper crowd already uh, assembled here, as you might expect. It's almost sort of business as usual, really. The grandstand is, is packed. The car park has been uh, packed since about four o'clock and the queues to get in uh, are enormous. And of course, the Sky Sports cameras are here to record it, along with ourselves at Rerun Productions yet again. Another final. Could the Pirates make it three in a row? Will the Aces uh, cause a a little bit of a minor surprise by taking the trophy and becoming champions into their new stadium. It's all to ride for. It's a great match in prospect. So let's head towards the pits now and see if we can find some riders to speak to. Well, big occasion tonight for the Pirates and uh, the man for the big occasion, of course, is uh, Captain and Grand Prix star Matthew Zanowski. Probably thinks that tonight we're going to see the real Matthew Zanowski after Monday. <laughs> Wasn't your best night, was it? <laughs> ah, you already forget about this night. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, you know, that was a tough night for me. I don't feel uh, anything on this track and on my bike in this day. But, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. rest of the team uh, make good, do some good job and, and uh, we have a drill. So, uh, so that was important. But uh, today I hope uh, I score more than four plus one I think you probably will but uh, if uh, at the beginning of the match at Bellevue somebody came up to you and said hey Captain Magic how about a draw would you settle for a draw at the end of the evening you would have said what I would say I would say uh, yes normally I will use some uh, uh, not so good words, what you can put to, to the tape. Absolutely. But uh, I would say, uh, yeah, that, that will be fantastic. So, um, yeah, you know, um, everything uh, will decide today and every point will be so important. And uh, we need just be one point on, on the front. It will be not easy, but, uh, yeah. but everyone knows we, we are strong on this, yeah. on this land. And uh, this is our home, so we, we will try to do everything. Yeah. So, uh, Hard match tonight, but pool pirates like hard matches. Yeah, um, yeah you know, we, we all work for this all season, so um, we all knew how important is this meeting, and um, we all knew what, what, what to do. And um, if, we'll, if we will be good enough today, we will get uh, another title. So, um, so this is something what we want to do, and uh, we try everything. Everybody in the stadium well, all the pool fans will be rooting for you, so on their behalf, wish you good luck. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, thank you, and that's uh, amazing how many people will will come today because uh, car park was full two uh, two hours before the meeting, so uh, that amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys with us, and uh, thank you for uh, for support all season, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Thank you. Well, the, uh, the rider that all the fans here wanted to see in the final after dipping out on the semi is this man with me, Dakota North, and I think he proved to everybody at Bellevue that despite the tricky track conditions up there, he's, he's back and raring to go and up for it. Is that right? Yeah, I had an okay night. I, uh, my last two heats were tough. I'd get three, which wasn't doing much, but uh, yeah, it was good, good to um, be racing again with a clear head and uh, a little bit hungry. Uh, I... Uh, had a bit of a rough month, and um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm back to the old me, I think. Yep. And uh, tonight, of course, it's all about uh, getting three in a row, and we're obviously thinking of Darcy, so extra little bit of incentive there to go the extra mile. Yeah, mate, we're all real hungry, and a um, bit of pressure from the, the boys up above there, and uh, <laughs> uh, we know what we've got to do. It's going to be a, it's gonna be tough, because Balfour have rode so good, and they had a... They ran a draw here earlier on in the year, so yeah, we're going to be, we're going to hit them hard from the, the get-go. So hopefully, uh, Magic is his usual self and uh, bangs in 15, and uh, <laughs> the rest of us can help him. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure all the fans out there are going to be right behind you tonight, and they all wish you good luck. Thank you. Well, Chris, uh, 
won't need uh, any incentive uh, for tonight, Chris. It's all about that trophy, three in a row. Yeah. And uh, that guy that uh, isn't with us tonight, who uh, we want to win it for. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, ourselves have battled all season for this. And um, we made it this far, so it'd be nice to shut that big mouth in the crowd. That would be the first one. But, um, <laughs> no, nah, look, track looks good. They're a good team, so it's not going to be easy. And um, we know that. So we're just going to do our normal thing. And, you know, fingers crossed it's good enough. Yep. On a personal note, uh, you're ending the season pretty good form and uh, that's perfect timing for tonight, isn't it? Yeah, it depends who you ask. <laughs> it's been a bit up and down, but um, yeah, for Pool it's been quite good towards the end. And um, yeah, we're confident for tonight. So um, like I said, make some starts and send them back to Manchester with a fat bottom lip. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's a huge crowd here and I'm sure the Pirates fans will be 100% behind you and uh, that's almost like a... An eighth man, really, isn't it? Yeah, we always got the best support and uh, massive crowd again tonight. And um, Matt will be rubbing his hands together, of course. And uh, hopefully we give him something to cheer about, which we, we should. We know we can, so we're just going to make it happen. Well, I'm sure on behalf of everybody here, we should good luck tonight, no Chris. Worries, thank you. Well, Neil's with me and uh, another day at the office, uh, all yep. these playoff finals. But um, this one looks as if it needs to be won tonight. Not like the Coventry situation where you came here level and uh, walked away with it. Don't think it's going to happen, is it? No, I don't think so. I know, um, you know, Bellevue are a good side. I mean, they proved that by coming back the way they did on Monday night. But, uh, you know, it's, it's our track and I'd like to think, you know, we've got a bit of an advantage. The track looks good. We've had a good walk around it and it is our racetrack tonight. The weather hasn't intervened, luckily. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Talking of magic, uh, it seems like uh, the general consensus is that he's going to score a few more points than he did Monday night. <laughs> Yes, I would think so. I think, um, you know, obviously, thankfully, Paul and Carl did a tremendous job in, uh, in the reserve berthing, sort of kept us in the competition, really. But, yeah, yeah Magic, you know, he, he struggled around there and, and, you know, a couple of the other boys did. But I think that, you know, all in all, to get a draw was great. If you'd have said to me at the start of the meeting, I would have torn your arm off. But when you're sort of 13 up, you think, well, hang on a second, you know, you want to win. But it wasn't to be. So what's Neil's game plan for the night then? we just got to do what we always do. We've got to try and get in there, hit them hard, and if, if, if a tactical needs to be played, they play it. Hopefully we won't in a, be in a position to, make, to play one, but, uh, you know, we've just got to just get the points on the board. Yeah. Well, good luck tonight. OK, thanks very much. Thanks. thanks Cheers. Well, here, here's Mark uh, with me now, and uh, I think um, if we'd have been uh, doing an interview with him sort of after about half a dozen heats or more, a Bellevue, he'd have been shell-shocked. He's looking a bit more composed now, and uh, it's all to play for, really, isn't it? I wouldn't say shell-shocked. Um, you know, Speedway you know, has got a funny way of... We're going to get some noise here, Steve, so we might want to go this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it wasn't going to plan, you know, that's clearly, but Speedway you know, throws up those um, curve balls, and you've got to tell you deal with them, it's important. But, you know, we weren't underestimating pool. We know they're good. You know, they haven't been the, the benchmark of British Speedway. You know, it was a, a, you know, a beautiful bloody trophy cabinet for no reason, so... Uh, yeah, it was important that we uh, regrouped and we, we fought back, which we did. Yep. And um, you'll be reassured by your performances on this track earlier this season when you've done pretty well, a lot better than some of the visiting clubs, so you take that with you tonight? Yeah, no, we've travelled away well all year as a, as, a as a group, so if we can do that again tonight, that's game on. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, pressure's got to be on the home side and uh, off you uh, as opposed to Monday night. Yeah, you can look at it that way, but we just got to attack. You know, there's this, we've got nothing to defend, you know, clearly. Um, so we're just going to go in the attack mode and, um, yeah, like I said, go for it. Yep. And uh, what's, uh, what's Mark's secret game plan yet? You can share it with me? No. Nah. <laughs> Good luck. Cheers. So here they come again. Two laps of the track. Of course, they'll all be doing four, ultimately. And here they all are. Jumping off straight across to the starting gate. They've done a track walk. They know what the track looks like. Uh, they go through this ritual every week. Tonight's no exception. So they're going down the lineup. And there's Steve Worrell, Craig Cook, Scotty Nichols. Josh Grishonek. Familiar face here. He looks a bit tense, doesn't he? I think he's lost his jelly babies. Max Frick, another very promising young Aussie rider. And a lot uh, 
will depend on Matty Zagar coming back from uh, injury. Gets a lukewarm reception from the Pirates fans, a big one from the uh, Aces fans. So our match presenter, Nigel Leahy, goes across to the Pirates. Oh, goodness me. Can't hear myself think. So, Carl Newman at number seven. What a fantastic uh, first leg he had up uh, at Kirky Lane on Monday, two days ago. As did this man, Paul Stark, at number six. Fantastic evening, nine points. Aziz Anoski. I think uh, the Wimborne Road uh, faithful know exactly what to expect from him tonight. Bikes and body put back together for this man at number four for the Pirates after that heavy, awkward tumble uh, on Monday. And that's Kasper Gamolski. Dakota North back in the full swing. You heard what he had to say earlier. Davy Watt. Had a mixed evening up at uh, Kirky Lane, but uh, I'm sure he'll put four good rides together tonight, as will this man at number one, the main man, Chris Holder. In blue on gate one for the Pirates, it's Davey Watt. Hope you can hear me, there's a wall of noise here. On gate two for the Aces in yellow, the number two rider, Max Frick. On gate three for the Pirates, in red is Chris Holder. And the rider in white on gate four for the Aces is their number one, Matty Zagar. So, what? Frick, Holder, Zagar. That's how they line up. Everything uh, now pointing to this first race. Scores are level at 46 points apiece. So we start with a level score line as uh, Rob Bottoms our starter here just bringing him into line for the all important race number one Here we go and immediately that's a good start from uh, Davey Watt from gate one and Chris Holder comes right around the outside from three Max Frick there did get a pretty good start but uh, it's uh, it's Davey Watt leading it up. Now Matty Zagar there looking menacing in third place, but Chris Holder's out in the dirt. Davey Watt, as he has done so often in race number one since he got on the uh, number two race jacket, clamping himself on the line, and Chris Holder sitting there with him. Zagar in third place, and it looks very much as if the parts are way to the best possible start. Maximum points. Davy Watt still leading it up. The crowd urging their favourite on here at Wimborne Road. Into the final bend they go. Davy Watt comes across the line. Goodness me, have you ever heard some noise? Chris Holder in second place. Third place to Matty Zagar and Max Frick bringing up the back. The Pirates now lead by 51 points to 47. A four-point lead after one race. Here they come around then, and really is deafening here. Can't hear myself uh, speak, but I uh, hope you can hear me. Here they come then across the line. Chris Holder and Davey Watt, maximum heat winners in race number one. So it's uh, heat number two, and we've got the... Uh, the re reserves from each side out, so crucial for the Pirates. Uh, but uh, their two reserves did so well up at Bellevue, covering some of the uh, mishaps from their senior team partners. But uh, here they are, the lineup for Heat 2 with the Aces on gates 1 and 3. We've got Steve Worrell in white going from gate 1. He'll be hoping to improve on his uh, performance 48 hours ago, as you heard uh, in the pits uh, before the match. Looking a little, little bit pensive, I thought, but uh, he could put that to rights with a win here from gate one. On gate two, Pirates hero Paul Stark, he goes in the red helmet. And on gate three, we've got Stefan Dilson in yellow. And the rider in blue from gate four, 
is Carl Newman for the Pirates. So reading across then, that makes it Worrell, Stark, Nielsen, Newman. Just need the riders to uh, come into line now. For a race obviously will be replicated in Heat 12, so how are these uh, reserve riders going to do tonight? They'll play an important part, that's for sure, and off they go. Looks to me as if Carl Newman gets a good one. It's Worrell that leading it up at the moment, but Newman uh, on the outside, Stark on the inside, Stefan Nilsson training at the back. So it's currently even Stevens, but uh, oh, Stark there comes storming through to take over the lead. It is followed home by Carl Newman and uh, the two pirates there. Where did they find that speed from? Steve Worrell uh, led that one up for the first uh, three quarters of a lap, but the two pirates there, they just came through. Paul Stark, well, look, look at him go. He's, he's, this is the form of his speedway career, I would say, because he's had a steady old season. Some good nights, some not so good. Look at this, he's tearing it up here. And the two Bellevue reserves got absolutely no answer to this. Gonna make it 10-2 on the night and give the Pirates an aggregate eight point lead after two races. Paul Stark and Carl Newman from Steve Morrow and Stefan Nielsen. Overall scoreline now, 56 to the Pirates and 48 to the Aces. What a start by the home team here tonight. And uh, is there any way back for the Aces? I'm sure Mark Lemon will be saying so because they did it on Monday. They can do it again tonight, but they've already got a bit of leeway to make up. There they are then, Carl Newman. And heh, a breathtaking ride that by Paul Stark there. So on we go to race number three. What can the Aces do in this one? They've got former pirate Josh Groshonek to maybe uh, uh, bring his uh, Wimbledon Road track and knowledge uh, to the Aces' advantage. But Pirates after the first two races absolutely rampant. Let's have a look at the lineup then. And uh, blue on gate one is the Pirate skipper Maciej Zanowski. On gate two for the Aces in yellow. And he's pretty smart from the starting gate. So it'll be interesting to see the first bend here because it's Craig Cook. We know how fast he's getting out of the traps lately. We've got Dakota North on uh, the gate three in the red helmet for the Pirates and completing the lineup then. That rider I mentioned a little earlier, Josh Groshonek. He'll be in the white helmet and he's going from gate position number four. It has to be said, Josh wasn't at his sparkling best uh, on his home track uh, to Bellevue. And he could well find that uh, he'll get a much more decent uh, total tonight here than he did up at Kirky Lane. But uh, that's the ups and downs of Speedway. But anyway, uh, Maciej Tanoski, pretty much almost unbeatable round here. But uh, Craig Cook next to him, pretty smart uh, trapper. And he's uh, looking to try and get across here. But uh, Maciej Tanoski gets away first. And look at Dakota North right with him. The two Pirates there up the back straight. Janoski just eases it off to allow uh, his partner around him as Gershonek it is. Oh no, it's... Uh, well, we're just checking uh, who that is in the uh, yellow helmet. It's Quake Cook who's uh, chasing him up. But once again, the Pirates away for a potential 5-1. Janowski takes a little look over his shoulder, sees uh, Cook uh, challenging strongly and Janowski certainly trying to edge his team partner along here as Cook's pretty lively, got plenty of speed. Janowski once again looks over his shoulder. This is uh, absolutely superb team riding here as Cook looks to try and split the Pirates pairing. Can they hold on for one more bend? North goes flying into it. Cook round in the dirt. Janowski trying to keep it screwed on. Up to the line they come. Oh, and it's a 4-2. Janowski, not for the first time, sacrificed his own win for his team partner there. You have to say that was absolutely top-rate speedway there. And uh, what a ride. What a ride that was from Craig Cook for the Bellevue Aces in the yellow helmet there. He just didn't give up and uh, to go to North wasn't quite as fast as Cook. As a result, Janowski, who was covering on the inside, 
just lost his position, but it gives the Pirates a 4-2. They lead on the night by 14 points to 4, and the progressive totals now 60 to the Pirates and 50 to the Aces. So, we go on to heat 4, and uh, the Pirates have won every one of the first uh, three races, but the Pirates uh, were given a little bit of a reminder that the Aces not dead yet, because Craig Cook there had a really good ride in heat 3 to give the Aces some hope. Here's the lineup then for heat number four with uh, Aces on gates one and three. We've got Stefan Nielsen there, number seven, in yellow from gate one. We've got Carl Newman, the Pirates, uh, number seven, in blue going from gate two. On gate three, we've got the skipper for the uh, Bellevue Aces, their number four, Scott Nichols. He's on gate three then, and the race lineup completed by the rider in red for the Pirates. Kasper Gomolski. He uh, had that awkward tumble up at uh, Bellevue 48 hours ago and uh, he uh, hit the fence and uh, I think um, he's feeling a little tender in the behind area if you'll uh, excuse the expression. Certainly the bike uh, he was riding was in pretty poor shape. It's all right now though. Here he is on the line. Here they go. And, uh, it's the Aces that are the first to show here with uh, Scotty Nichols in white leading it up from Stefan Nilsson. Then uh, we got Carl Newman in uh, third place. What's he going to do uh, here to try and get on terms? Uh, Stefan Nilsson certainly uh, giving the Aces some hope. It's Scotty Nichols. I don't think they're going to catch him in a hurry, but uh, Stefan Nilsson was sharp from the tapes and he looks to be holding on to this. Uh, to give the uh, Aces a lot of hope here and to uh, reduce the arrears to just six points is exactly what we thought that the uh, the Aces were going to do. Scotty Nichols is away and gone in front but Stefan Nilsson here riding extremely well. Casper Gamolti trying to get on terms but uh, looks like the Pirates have been outgated here and uh, another glimmer of hope for the Aces as they take a 5-1 to the delight of their supporters there on bend number one and uh, the aces take a 5-1 to make the score line on the night pirates 15 aces 9 and uh, overall pirates 61 aces 55 Well, on Heat 5, and certainly that 5-1 in Heat 4 has given the uh, the Pirates fans something to think about. A little bit more subdued after that race, but uh, they've got their man Davey Watt in this one to try and uh, lift them back up again and keep uh, get them back to a winning momentum. But uh, here's how they line up anyway, and it's the Aces that are on 1-3. and three. We've got uh, Max Frick in the white helmet. He's on the inside. And uh, on gate two then in red, it's Davy Watt. Going from gate three in yellow, we've got Steve Worrell. And uh, gate four for the Pirates in blue, Paul Stark. So, Frick, Watt, Worrell, Stark. That's the lineup of Heat 5. And so the Pirates now have got uh, a six-point advantage after four races. But, uh, considering they were eight up after two races, uh, it's just uh, starting to look a little bit more of an even contest than maybe we thought it might be after two races. Well, we didn't think it would be because we know the Aces are uh, a good team, a good spirit, and uh, Mark Lemon there, he'll be driving them on. So uh, will they continue their recovery in Heat 5 or will the Pirates hit back? We're about to find out. Once again, it's the Aces that get away pretty smartly, and Paul Stark there goes tumbling on the first bend. Uh, I guess just a little bit of a knock, and uh, stuck under the air fence. I think that'll be a rerun with all four. First bend bunching. I'm pretty sure it will be anyway. The big decision here in uh, this one is uh, with Mick Bates. He's just looking at the monitor. He's just having a look at the replays to see exactly what uh, might have happened there. But certainly Paul Stark, I don't think he would have gone into the air fence of his own volition, sure. So uh, I can only think that'll be an all four back situation. There's no lights on at the moment. And uh, we like to see four riders in a race, don't we? 
So we're back with the restart of race number five and just a reminder that it's Max Frick on gate one in uh, white helmets. On gate two it's Davy Watt in red. On gate three it's Steve Worrell in yellow and picking himself up from under the safety fence there. Doesn't seem to be uh, too much the worse for wear. In the blue helmet it's Paul Stark. So it's the rerun of heat five and uh, the match uh, now I would say after four races, quite evenly poised, and I think uh, it could go all the way down to the wire. What do I know? But, uh, we'll take it race by race, and at the moment, uh, we're just waiting to get them into line for heat five. Seems to be some reluctance all round. Ah, oh, somebody's made a move. Who's that? Max Frick came forward first. Right, so Ma Max Frick in white. Dave Watt in uh, red, Steve Ball in yellow. Once again, it's the aces that seem to be away better there, and they've got another 5 1 potential as uh, Davey Watt there trying to uh, get in ter on terms with uh, Steve Ball, but uh, certainly another 5 1 here would make it really interesting. Dave Watt now trying to go around the outside of Ball. Worrell shuts him out and this is a good ride by the uh, Aces pairing as uh, Max Frick leads it up. Paul Stark training at the back and uh, what can Davey Watt do? He's tried the outside. Is he going to try the outside again? Worrell certainly riding a lot better. Max Frick leading it up then. And the Aces would come within two points of the Pirates if uh, they can hold on to this fire. It looks as if they're going to do that. Wow, this is... Uh, Really a turnaround here for the Pirates as Davy Watt now trying to get back into second place. Big effort on the final bend, but I think Steve Wall's probably just about got it. Oh no! Oh dear! What a ride there for Davy Watt. Just when it looked a uh, foregone conclusion that the Aces were going to take a two consecutive five when Davy Watt there puts it in the dirt, turns it on with his partner Paul Stark training at the back nowhere in that one it was a win for Max Frick Davy Watt then second third place was uh, Steve Worrell fourth Paul Stark 4-2 to the Aces another race win for them so uh, they edge back it's now 17 to the Pirates 13 to the Aces and overall 63 to the Pirates 59 to the Aces we got a match on well, uh, we're on to heat six, and not the evidence I've seen so far. Uh, the Aces could be on for a 5-1 this time because they got a really strong pairing. Let's have a look at the lineup anyway. It's uh, Dakota North in a red gate one. He did start off with a race win, uh, albeit that uh, he had a bit of protection from Matty Janowski, but nevertheless, he was pretty lively. And it, uh, Dakota goes on gate one in a red. On two, we've got Matty Zegar in a white. On three, we've got Casper. Gomolski in blue looked a little bit out of sorts actually he was brilliant uh, seven days ago but uh, on the evidence of his first race maybe not that Casper tonight we don't know maybe, maybe prove me wrong and it's uh, Craig Cook in yellow for the aces and we certainly could see what uh, he's all about so Zagar and Cook here looking a pretty menacing pairing I'd say for the uh, for the aces uh, Dakota North and Casper Gomolski certainly going to have to be uh, at their best if they're going to prevent this Aces pairing from uh, inflicting uh, another reversal on the Pirates. So here they are then, at the tape. This is race number six. Here they go. And it is indeed the Pirates that get away first. But the uh, Aces are sweeping around the outside. As uh, Oh, look at that, Craig Cook right around the outside along the back straight there and he's up into the lead Dakota North there in second place of the Pirates Matty Zagar and Kasper Gomolski they're all bunched together as uh, Craig Cook is way out in front absolutely flying and uh, who's going to catch him tonight on this form in second place then Dakota North there Matty Zagar in third place and another two point uh, advantage to the aces could put them within striking distance uh, i did think this might be a 5-1 but if dakota north can keep it steady for another lap 
he'll take a vital second place, but Matty Zagar is trying to track him down, and uh, to go to North getting a little bit out of shape there. Gaspar Olski certainly not looking so uh, uh, in form tonight, training off once again at the back. I don't know whether that injury is caught up with him, but the ace should take another 4-2. It's all turned around in the last three. The Pirates took the first three uh, races by race wins. Now the Aces have taken the next three. Wow, we've got to certainly have got a match on our hands here. And here comes Craig Cook to celebrate a brilliant win. He was way out in front, and uh, he's going to kick some catching tonight. If uh, any of the Pirates get behind him, uh, they'll be lucky to see which way he went. But certainly Craig Cook there, uh, brilliant, uh, an inspirational ride for him. And the scoreline now is the Pirates on 19, the Aces on 17, and the overall score, 65-63. Wow, it's close. On we go to race number seven then, and uh, nip and tuck this one now. And uh, Pirates got a pairing to try and uh, hit a little bit uh, back this time because they've got Chris Holder and Matty Janoski. It's Chris Holder in red. Looks pretty good in race number one. and. Uh, Chris Holder is on uh, gate one. On gate two, we've got Josh Grishonek in the white helmet for the Aces. Pirate skipper Magic Janowski goes in blue from gate three. And it's the skipper of the Aces, Scotty Nichols, who goes on gate four. He'll be in the yellow helmet. Holder Grishonek, Janowski Nichols. That's the lineup for heat number seven. Just two points between them on the night. Two points, of course, on aggregate. Everything to ride for. And uh, if you have to say that in the last race, it was the Aces big guns that, uh, that were threatening. This time, you'd have to say it's the, uh, the Pirates big guns. And certainly uh, a 5-1 here from the holder Janowski uh, pairing would uh, certainly pull the uh, Aces up in their tracks. But uh, Grishonek and Scotty Nichols, of course, uh, no mean performer, both ex-pirates. Roshonek's got it over Holder on the first bend, and Scotty Nichols is coming through to pass him. Chris Holder's at the back. Janoski on the inside there, trying to get the lead. And he comes through to challenge Roshonek. Janoski, Roshonek, Nichols, Chris Holder way at the back. Only a share of the spoils. Pirates would have been hoping for more this time, but uh, the Aces really looking menacing. And Grishonek there, not giving up the ghost yet. He's still having a good go, but uh, Scotty Nichols in third place. And uh, now beginning to look as if uh, the Aces are going to sustain their challenge. Chris Holder certainly nowhere in this one and uh, trailed off quite badly at the back as uh, Magic Janowski keeps it going. Grishonek in second place, Scotty Nichols third, uh, Jay of the Spoils, and still just two points between them, Pirates would have really expected more that time, but it didn't come, and uh, that makes it 22-20 on the night, 68-66 on aggregate, wow, it's close. So the halfway stage of the match, nothing between them. There was nothing between them at the start. There's just two points between them now. That's really nothing. It could go in a flash. But uh, coming into line, we've got Kasper Gamosi. He hasn't uh, had a very good evening so far. He hasn't beaten anybody. And uh, this is Kasper's third ride. Needs to step up to the mark this time, I would say. Here he is in red on gate one. On gate two, we've got Steve Worrell in the yellow helmet for the Aces. On three, we've got Carl Newman in blue. Again, uh, good in heat two, but uh, not quite so good in his second race. Max uh, Frick in white goes from gate four. So this is, this is a race that could go either way. He could go a heat win the Pirates, or he could go a heat win to the Aces. At the moment, it's 22-20 on the night, 68-66 on aggregate. So reading across from the inside, Gamolski, Worrell, 
Newman and Frick. None of them want to come up to the tapes. Oh, all right, well, somebody does. Max Frick, reluctantly. So all coming into line then. The uh, worry for the Pirates is Casper Gamolsi. Uh, brilliant uh, seven days ago. Uh, took a tumble at Bellevue. What can he do here? And he seems to get a bit of a jump that time. And uh, yes, Gamolski is away. Carl Newman with him, but the ace is right there. Gamolski, a lot better this time. He uh, certainly hadn't um, shown up too well so far, but uh, there we've got Carl Newman riding in the tight line. Gamolski out there, and the Pirates on to a 5 1 with the uh, rider in a white, which is Max Frick in third place. And uh, this will uh, give the Pirates fans something to uh, if they can hold on to this, because Max Frick uh, is. Really close at hand, Gomolski then leads it up from Carl Newman. This would restore a six-point lead to the Pirates. I think they're going to need it. We're looking at some of the uh, later heats and the form of the top-end riders for the uh, Aces. But at the moment, good bit of team riding, a good start by the two Pirates, good bit of team riding, and it's uh, a win for Pastor Gomolski. Carl Newman in second place. Third place to Max Frick, Steve Worrell in four. 5 1 makes it 73 points to 67 on aggregate, 27 21 on the night. Six points between them. Um, well, that's uh, a better result for the Pirates, but uh, the Aces are certainly not done yet. I'm quite sure. Definitely noise here as the two pirates celebrate. So we're on to race nine then, and uh, we've got a very good match in front of us tonight. And uh, in uh, heat nine, the lineup is as follows, with the pirates on one of the three. It's Paul Stark on one in blue. On gate two, Scotty Nichols for the Aces in white. On three, Davy Watt in the red helmet for the Pirates. And on four, had a good time, a good race last time out, and that was Stefan Nilsson. So uh, again, a very even looking race on paper on the evidence of what we've seen tonight. But uh, so it's Paul Stark who started off well, but then uh, trailed in last. And we've got Scotty Nichols alongside him, who's uh, been uh, right in the thick of the action and. Uh, a likely race winner this time I, if he gets out in front certainly then it's Davy Watt on three had that uh, very good last bend to split the aces and take uh, his previous ride uh, second place and then Stefan Nilsson very good last time out in yellow looks like getting out the start is going to be crucial here good one uh, there from uh, the rider in gate two that's the rider in white, which is uh, Scotty Nichols. Davy Watt right with him, Paul Stark in third place. Scotty Nichols and Davy Watt then tearing it up out in front. Nichols is uh, really riding a very determined race here. And a share of the spoils this time wouldn't be a bad result with Paul Stark there holding a comfortable third place out of Stephen Nilsson. So Scotty Nichols out front from Davy Watt. If it stays like this, uh, the Pirates would maintain their six point advantage after nine races. So Scotty Nichols here, comfortable leader out in front. Davy Watt in second place. Uh, third place, we've got Paul Stark and for Stefan Nilsson. That's the way as they come around the last bend, it's going to end up, barring any misfortunes. Drawn race, share of the spoils, all decided really on the first uh, bend. And uh, that's a 3-3. Three, three. And a win for Scotty Nichols. Makes the scoreline 30 points to 30 points uh, to the Pirates and 24 to the Aces. And on aggregate overall, 76-70 in favour of the Pirates. So we move on to Heat 10, getting towards the sharp end and it's far from uh, a done deal this one. And uh, a lot of this 
final is going to be decided by some of the big guns later in the proceedings. But uh, the support men are uh, doing their bit at the moment. But uh, we got uh, the clash of the titans this one with Matty Zagar and Magic Janowski. Here's the full lineup. Matty Zagar goes home at gate one this time in the white helmet. We've got uh, Dakota North alongside him in the red helmet on gate two. We've got Max Frick on gate three in yellow for the aces. And for the Pirates, says Skipper, the magic man, Maciej Zanowski, in blue, he's on gate four. Zagar, North, Frick, Zanowski. That's the lineup then. And once again, uh, the Pirates will be anxious to hold on to their six point advantage. What will Matty Zagar do? He's got two third places so far. Max Frick's got a, a race win, looked very good when he was in front. Maciej Zanowski has. Uh, got uh, a third and a first so what can he do here in heat 10 in the blue helmet from gate 4 what do, can the go to all do on 2 so good start from the uh, pirate skipper from gate 4 as he's trying to come through to take Lega he comes right up the inside to take it over Dakota North in uh, oh, Zagar's just got him back Look at this for Speedway. Magic Janowski up the inside to take it back over. Zegar in second, North in third. Wow, this is Speedway out of the top draw. Janowski and Zegar battling it out. Zegar certainly not giving up yet, and he's coming back at uh, Janowski. We're there into the final bend. Janowski there tearing it up. Zegar right with him. Oh, look at that. What a close finish. No, it's one to go. There it is, Mito. I saw a chicken flag. Zagar's got him. Oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, oh, look at this speedway. Oh, my goodness me. Matt Ford is uh, shouting in my ear. Look at that. Oh, that is. Oh, is that one of the best races we've seen here in many a year? Wow. Under pressure. I thought it was all over after three laps. I was out of breath. Patrick Janossi wasn't. And Matty Zagar. Wow! Speedway playoffs ignited. Well, I'm speechless after that one, but it was a 4-2 race win to the Pirates. Nevertheless, was a race win ever more hard earned than that one by the captain there, Matty Zanowski. Matty Zagar was all over him like a rash and credit to Zagar there. He didn't give up, tried to find a way through, didn't quite. Dakota North way back in third place. Max Frick was uh, in fourth. Whoa. Well, I'm sure TV viewers throughout the world will have enjoyed that race. They'll be enjoying this meeting here because it's a brilliant meeting. And uh, the 4-2 makes it 34-26, an eight-point advantage to the Pirates. But I, I just, this match is just not over yet. 80-72 on aggregate with one, two, three, four, five races to go. Anything can happen. Well, after the first three races, you might well have thought that the uh, destiny of the trophy would have been decided by now as we're up to heat 10, but far, far from it. This is anybody's trophy. And uh, OK, so the Pirates have just pulled uh, a little bit of an advantage to eight points. But uh, I would say in the closing heats, that will come under pressure and none more so than in this race because the... Uh, the Bellevue Aces have got their danger man uh, on the gate three in yellow, and that's Craig Cook, because once he's got out of the gate, he looked pretty much invincible tonight. He's very, very fast indeed. So here's the full lineup then. Josh Koshonik, much better in his uh, second outing, goes from gate one in white. We've got Chris Holder, started off well, but then he trailed in a poor last in his second race. He goes from gate two in red, so better things probably expected from Chris this time. It's, uh, as I say, that danger man, Craig Cook, in yellow on gate three. And on gate four for the Pirates in blue is their number two, Davey Watt. So reading it through again from the inside, Josh Krishonek, Chris Holder, Craig Cook, Davey Watt. Big heat 11 here. And Davey Watt gets away. Oh, no, he doesn't. It's the two aces that get away. And they're on to a 5-1. Oh, Davey Watt gets filled in 
as it hits. Oh, Craig Cook leading it up. Chris Holder now coming up to uh, try and relegate Josh Groshonek. He's having a good old go there. Groshonek just has to ease off as Chris Holder comes through. David Watt training at the back there. Can he get on turns to Groshonek? Craig Cook way out of it. Uh, he's going to be difficult for any of the Pirates to uh, do anything about with uh, him still having... Uh, Another potential two races, but uh, the uh, difference between the team is going to go back to six points in this one because Davy Watt got shut right out by his own team partner, unfortunately. But Chris did eventually come through to relegate Grishonek back to third place, but way spaced out in this one, and uh, it's still close again. Chris Holder looks over his shoulder to see Josh Groshonek in third place. Davy Watt rounds off his evening disappointingly uh, with seven points from four rides after that last place there. And it makes the scoreline after 11 races, 36 to the Pirates, 30 to the Aces. And on aggregate, same difference of six points. Pirates, 82. And uh, the Aces, 76. And there's uh, Craig. Getting a good cheer there from his Aces supporters on the first bend. Yeah, the chant goes round Darcy Ward. Of course, in seven days' time, we've got uh, an additional fixture. World champion Greg Hancock will be here along with a uh, fantastic lineup of riders for the Magic versus Monster Darcy Ward benefit meeting. So this isn't the last match of the season here at Wimborne Road as originally envisaged. We've got that additional event to raise funds for the Darcy Ward Foundation and that's in one week's time. But right now we've got a playoff on our hands as we come to Heat 12 and uh, Heat 12 brings out the reserves again. In Heat number two, it was the Pirates who uh, took a 5-1. Since then we've seen Steve Worrell and uh, Stefan Nielsen up their game quite considerably and uh, I've got a feeling that um, they'll be doing their damnedest to prevent another 5-1 which would hand a 10-point lead over to the Pirates with three heats remaining and that would be disastrous for the Aces. So I think that we can expect something different this time and I'm sure Mark Lemon has got Steve Worrell and Stefan Nielsen motivated up looks like uh, there's been a last minute change of bike for Paul Stark he's coming out on another bike don't know what his problem was there but uh, Paul Stark certainly having to do a last minute change of machinery anyway unless he just had some adjustment made to the bike that he was on but certainly a last minute panic half a minute to go He's going to make it. Here's the lineup then for heat number 12 as the riders come up. On gate one, Carl Newman in the blue helmet. On gate two, for the Aces in yellow, Stefan Nilsson. On gate three for the Pirates in red, Paul Stark. Now on gate four, in the white helmet for the Aces, it's Steve Worrell. It's the reserves race then, never was in the whole of the 2016-15, not there yet, 2015 season. A more important reserves race than this one. Dada walks away. Oh, and the Aces have made a start. Well, no, where did Carl Newman come from? I thought the Aces had made a start. Oh, Newman leads it up. Paul Stark's training at the back, so uh, Stefan Nielsen and Steve Worrell there in the minor places. But Carl Newman now, out in the dirt where he likes to be, the two aces there. So it's going to be another drawn race unless something uh, remarkable happens. I don't know what happened to Paul Stark's bike, but certainly he didn't get out the gate and he's training at the back, so maybe there was some issue. Carl Newman though, no problems with him. I thought he'd actually been gated, but he just pushed into that first corner and he's holding on for grim uh, death here as uh, they come round with a lap to go. Paul Stark trying to make ground, but I don't think he got the speed in that bike. And uh, so it's Warren Nilsson uh, team riding it for second and third. And it's still going to be just uh, 
six points between them as Carl Newman comes around to take the checkered flag. Worrell and uh, Newton in minor places there. Paul Stark at the back, 3-3 three, three, makes it 39 points to 33. 85-79 on aggregate, three races remaining, six points between them, and uh, three vital races to go. Wow, this is some meeting. Carl Newman, he's done his part. So, uh, the tension continues. 5-1 to the aces in this one, that means it's just a two-point ball game, or motorcycle game. And the aces have got the pairing to do it, they got one and three, and they got Craig Cook and Matty Zager, their top two riders. Well, that's Scotty Nichols might feature in there somewhere, but uh, the Pirates have got Chris Holder and Matty Janowski, so it's absolutely full of stardom here with three Grand Prix riders. Here's how they line up then. In yellow, on gate one for the aces, it's Craig Cook. And wow, he, his form tonight has been pretty much unbeatable. A second place, then two wins, and way out in front. If he gets out from the start, that's going to pose problems for the Pirates. So it's Craig Cook on gate one. On two, we've got Matty Zanowski, the rider in blue for the Pirates and their skipper, of course. On gate three, we've got Matty Zagar in white for the Aces. And on gate four, in red for the Pirates, we've got Chris Holder. Four from uh, three starts for Chris tonight. If he can uh, put a win in here, that will be something special. So, here's the lineup then. It's Cook, Janowski, Zagar, Holder. Big, big Heat 13. Absolutely massive Heat 13, this and uh, could go either way. Pirates will be happier with a draw in this one. The Aces really do need a race win. They've got the riders to do it. Oh, and Matty Janowski absolutely tears from the gate there and oh, leads it up. Chris Holder trying to find a way past the, uh, the two Aces, but it's Janowski in front from Zagar and Cook and Holder. It's a, it's a 3-3 at the moment. Janowski trying to put as much distance in, but Zagar, that uh, danger man there in uh, second place, is moving up on Matty Janowski. Janowski now is coming under increasing pressure from Zagar and Cook. Pulls away, coming out of the pits turn, but those two aces there just trying to get on jumps. Cook now has come through to take up the chase. Janowski has got one more lap uh, of the track to do. Cook there challenging strongly. Janowski pulls it up the back straight. The Polish Grand Prix superstar is doing the business big time for the Pirates tonight as he takes the race win there. Aces in second and third place. Chris Holder trailed at the back there. Not the best of evenings for Chris, but all importantly, a share of the spoils and still just six points between them with two heats remaining. Wow, this is some speedway playoff and it's 42-36 to the Pirates, 88-82 on aggregate. Heat 14 up next. Once again, it looks like the Aces have got riders that could take a 5-1 there. We Could we have a last heat decider here to decide the playoffs tonight? It's looking that way. Well, just can't read it. Well, we're still down to uh, the penultimate race here, 14. We have no idea who's going to win this trophy, although the Pirates have got a six-point advantage. That could go down to a two-point advantage and a last heat decider. Who knows? If the Pirates can share the spoils in this one, they are the champions, the three-in-a-row champions. But look at the opposition on gate one. He's had a fantastic night for the Aces, their skipper, Scott Nichols. Scott Nichols in gate one, yellow helmet. On two, we've got the rider in blue for the Pirates, Kasper Gomolski. He started off uh, a bit slowly, but uh, he had a win uh, last time out. If he could do the same again this time, he would be the undoubted hero. On gate three, we've got Josh Grishonik, the former Pirate, in white for the Aces. And gate four the red helmet for the Pirates, 
And number three, Dakota North. Again, six points so far, including a race win. So this is a pretty evenly balanced race. I've got a feeling that Scotty Nichols will be looking to make it away from gate one here to, to win this. But if uh, the Pirates can share the spoils with Dakota North and Casper Gamolsi, they will be the league champions. If the, uh, if the Ace can get a 5-1 here, it's just two points between them with one race to go. Nominated riders with the aces having the choice of gate positions. Oh, what a prospect. Do we want a last team decider? Pirates fans would like to sew it up in this one. Here we go. Big, big heat 14 then. Starter walks away. Oh, and what a race. What a start from Gamolski there. Even better one from... Uh, oh! Oh, look at this. Gamolski leads it up from Brasonek to go to North in third place. If it stays like this, Pirates will be uh, league champions. Oh, get up, get up, get up, Dakota North. He takes a tumble, leaves Gamolski uh, as the... Uh, Race leader, but Groshonek now pushing him all the way. Gamolski and Groshonek. Groshonek there pushing up the inside. Gamolski getting a little bit out of shape. If Gamolski can hold on, the Pirates will win the league. One lap to go. The crowd are going absolutely mental. Kasper Gamolski. Ah, he hit the pitch. Effort. He's coming round to win the league playoffs for the Paul Pirates. Listen to that noise. I've never heard noise like it. Kasper Gamolski wins heat 14. The Pirates are the new elite league champions. The three in a row champions. Oh my goodness me. Well, Kasper Gamolski is absolutely ecstatic. I have never heard noise like this. At a speedway meeting here at Wimborne Road. Kasper Gamolski, Dakota North just running across. Look at that. His quick thinking to get off the track. The tension here has been unbelievable because the aces have kept it in the balance for 14 races. You have to take your hat off to And the inevitable chant of Darcy Ward goes up. Darcy Ward, you can hear it. This has been done for Darcy, I'm sure. He'll have been watching this on the TV. Whoa. Well, just getting my breath here because we've had a truly breathtaking, exciting evening of Speedway. Final race of the night then, here it is. The cup uh, destiny is decided, but there's still honor at stake here. We've got Scotty Nichols on gate one, the nominated rider in white for the aces. Matej Janowski in red goes from gate two. Greg Cook in yellow from gate three. And on gate four, Papur in blue, Kasper Gamolski. All, pa all uh, Polish pairing for Paul in this one, all British pairing for the aces. So it's Nichols, Janowski, Cook, Gamolski. Pirates lead by that all important six points. Can't be beat. But the Aces can finish this off with even more pride than they've already taken from their performance tonight. And that's quite considerable, I must say. Uh, and they can, uh, they can take a lot of pride if they get a win here, particularly with the two Polish riders who uh, both started with the third place. Magic Janowski then reeled off three pressurized wins. Gamolski had a last place and then two wins. And that all important heat 14, away they go. And uh, it is, in fact, the aces that get away to a 5-1. I don't know whether the Pirates are going to be trying too hard in this one. Maybe not, but certainly that's Craig Cook, followed by Scotty Nichols. No, I don't think uh, I don't think the Pirates are too worried about this one. They'll just uh, take the one point, 
And if the team manager, Mr. Middleditch, has got anything uh, to do with this, he looked just said to the lads, hey guys, just go out there. Who knows? But certainly, Ace is finishing off with a consolation 5-1 with Craig Cook doing what he's been doing all night, tearing it up, leading it through with Scotty Nichols in second place. A lap to go. Magic Janowski there in third place. Kaskovic Gamolski. He did his hard work in heat 14. He's just doing a few wheelies and poodling round. Well done to the Aces. Take a 5-1. And well done to Kasper Gamolski. He's a hero in heat 14. Not called upon to do anything in heat 15. Final score in the match. 46 to the Pirates. 44 to the Aces. Couldn't have been closer. Who's to say it wouldn't have been a 5-1 anyway? And uh, just as well the Pirates were six up, maybe. Who knows? But final aggregate score 92 and 90 in favour the 2015 Elite League playoff champions, the Paul Ready Power Pirates. Oh, and here we have. I don't think they'll be doing any burn ups in the stadium. Still filling in the paperwork from last year. And here we have Magic Zanowski. There's the goggles. Oh, there. oh, I thought I was going to catch him for a minute. Blast. And oh, I don't know what that was. Was it a glove? Here comes another glove. Yeah, here comes a glove. Oh, no. Didn't reach very far. There go the gloves. Sheer magic. Well, it's a two-point match in the end. And I think that uh, does justice to it. Three in a row champions. And work some racing we've seen. Casper Gamosi in that A14. That was undoubtedly the most pressured race of the night and we had a few others like it but certainly uh, with uh, Josh Koshonek and Scott Nichols breathing right down his uh, exhaust pipe and with uh, Dakota North oh, here's, here's Casper he's loving this
Pat and Milo put this team together. They've ridden together, they've stayed together through thick and through thin, and tonight they brought home the silverware. Here they come again. And of course the Pirates got their DW43 shirts on and uh, that was quite inevitable. Please give your appreciation for the runners-up in the 2015 Elite League title chase, the Bellevue Red Truck Aces! Here they are, Midler and the boys. They've done it. They've done it. So number one, Chris Holder, actually didn't win a race tonight. He got us off to a good start there in race number one. Davey Watt, seven points, Mr. Reliable. Dakota North, back in the groove, six points to him. Three finishes. Big cheer coming up now, I'm sure. Kasper Gamowski, under pressure, held his nerve. Kasper Gamolski, seven. Adi Janowski, what a year he's had. Oh, unbelievable. Two reserves up next. Two star. And Carl Newman. Well, those two at Bellevue are unbelievable. Paul Stark, nine points. God. Who would have expected that? And of course, Midlow. Who else? There they are then. The victorious Pirates. Here comes the cup. There it goes. Blue and white ribbons already in place. One, two, three. Fireworks and trophies and smiles all round for the victorious Paul Ready Power Pirates. Playoff champion. Wow, I must say. Uh, look, I'm, I'm stoked. Couldn't be happier. This is my fifth league title uh, in England and they've all been with Poole, so <laughs> I couldn't be happier. We've always called you the talisman and we've said that uh, you bring your luck with you, but you love this place. Poole means so much to you. Man, this is my home, and uh, you guys make it my home. So thank you very much. I, I couldn't, I could not be happier, and uh, I'm glad you're all catching me when I'm sober now. Because maybe in about an hour, I'm not going to be so much. Enjoy the moment, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Watts, Dak. First of all, um, just on a serious note, obviously for your dad, we all wish him uh, a quick recovery and hope that things are improving. Yeah, he's got another few weeks in hospital, maybe three weeks, and. Uh, he should be allowed to leave and come back to my hometown. He's in Melbourne at the moment, but uh, yeah, he's he's watching tonight. So uh, hey, Dad, if he's here, we're still on TV. But um, yeah, he's he's on the men, so everything's looking good. And I'm sure that that's uh, helped to give you a bit of inspiration tonight to make sure that you did it for the Pirates. Yeah, I was real hungry. I had a week off and uh, just uh, weighed a few things up, and yeah, I just realised I wanted the race uh, a lot more than I didn't. So uh, hopefully, I did my job in the final and. Uh, Shame I had a fall, but uh, it couldn't. Uh, I'm so happy for Casper that uh, he actually kind of won the meeting for us in that race. Uh, it couldn't happen to a better guy, and uh, he really needed that. So yeah, we're really pumped. Nice words. Thank you very much, Dakota North. So much support for the team, and um, you know, you get behind us so much, and it makes such a big difference. And I think you know that's why we're here today. I'm sure at the beginning of the year, when you knew that you were going to be signing for the Pool Pirates, that was something very much on your wish list. Tonight, it couldn't have been a bigger wish. No, you know, riding for the Pirates in general is just a you know big opportunity, and and doing this as well, you know, just just tops it all off. You know, speechless, lost for words. It's been amazing, great. Enjoy it for the rest of the evening and beyond. Paul Star. Sparky had a great night. Oh, family picture. There's uh, Matt Ford's family and the Pirates. Little Max Holder there right down in front. Facing the cameras. He's not, he's not shy. 
I can't believe it. It's a really good start and go three point and uh, I'm all the time go outside, outside and maybe one one car is go inside and three point and big win in pool. I'm really very happy. Come on. You, you knew in your head you must win for the Pirates to win the cup. No. Four laps. You didn't know? No, it's because maybe <laughs> you didn't know what happened to Dakota. No, I go I go go three point and uh, I don't look no. uh, you know, yeah. I'm just go. Yeah, just go. <laughs> well done. Thank you. There's no other better place to race than down here at Wimborne Road when the pirates are on a high. No uh, no better place in general, you know, uh, you cut me in two I'm I'm full through and through and uh, I love this club, I love the people, I love the management and uh, I couldn't be prouder. We're very proud too. Folks, it's Kyle Newman. Magic, I remember in particular last year we stood on this spot and I said, what about next year? And you said to me then, of course, it'll be pool. And I guess that's fulfilled itself and more tonight. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm so excited. It's, it's hard to say something now because... Uh, um, I need. I think I need some beer. Then it will be better to talk, you know. But I think we all need this. <laughs> yeah, guys, that was that was an amazing night. Um, was really tough, and uh, we all put 100% to this meeting. And uh, I, I hope you feel this. Sorry for last year, but uh, that was nothing changed. So um, uh, anyway, we win, and I'm so happy and glad I can be in this team. So so proud and. Of course, uh, the, of course, this this season we uh, dedicate to Darcy. We we miss him a lot, and this is for him. Beautiful words from Maciek Janowski. Chris, we talked to Matt about highs and lows. It's been uh, well, Max, Max is going to Max is going to have a word first. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what it was, it might have been Australian, but uh, whatever it was, he looks pretty happy about it. Chris, we talked about highs and lows tonight, obviously, great big, big high and dedicated to your best buddy. Yeah, of course, uh, everyone here, you know, Darky's a massive part of this club and um, we miss him. We obviously, we can't change things at the moment, but um, to bag a win tonight was uh, the best thing we can do for him and, you know, all the boys dedicate the win for him. and. Uh, Hopefully we see him down here soon, but um, he's doing good. He's doing everything he can. So thanks to the supporters for an awesome season again. I know tonight was pretty average, but um, we did all right. We managed. We got a good team, you know. Same seven guys started, same guys finished, and uh, it was good enough for the win. So we'll take it. Fantastically proud to be a pirate supporter tonight and to be any part of this wonderful club. And uh, in the future, of course, we know that Chris Holder has got a big part to play for pool. Oh, 100%. I wouldn't go anywhere else. So. Um, I love this club and everything to do with it and uh, I wish I could have been better for you tonight but I don't know what the hell's going on but we got the win so uh, you know I'll have to lean on the boys for this one. We, we love the fact that uh, even though you did the four points tonight it was enough and it was the guys once again that responded and everyone played their part. Yeah it's over two legs you know a couple of guys struggled on Monday and a couple of guys struggled today but um, in the end we we're the strongest team all, over, all round over two legs and um, we showed tonight, uh, Bellevue put up an awesome fight and we knew it was going to be tough, but we survived, so it's good. Nice one. Thank you very much, Chris Holder. We look forward to seeing you next week for the Monster. Yeah, it's, it's totally fitting that you can have the last word tonight on these boys because they've been here all year. Uh, for the first time in a long time, it's been seven riders that have gelled and performed for the whole year and brought the title back. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I think, as you say, the seven riders to start with and, and the seven to finish with are the ones that they've got us here and won the final. And yeah, what, what you can't, I can't say enough about them. Um, they, they've done through thick and thin. It's been a tough year um, for everybody in Speedway over the last few months. But, you know, we had to get our heads down and do a job and we did a job. And as you say, 43 years since Bellevue did it, which is Darcy's number. Four and three together is seven, which is how many times we've won the title. So it was in the stars. We love the thought of that. The maths is great. As far as next week's concern, obviously we want everyone to turn out and support a meeting which is very special to all of us. That's right, yeah, you've got some great riders coming down to show their respect for Darcy and, you know, I'm sure you guys, fantastic crowd tonight, thank you for your support once again. But, you know, please do turn up next week for Darcy because I know it means the world to him. Swindon Robin towards the end, but he's always be a Paul Pirate at heart. And uh, once again, thank you everybody, but please do come next week and, and, and support the kid because uh, we love him.
We certainly do. We love you, Neil, as well. Neil Middleditch, the manager. Starkey. Casper. Midlow. Waddy. And, of course, Carl Newman. And our mascot, Chad Worsfeld. Marvellous scenes here. So how about this, ladies and gentlemen, we round up our performance. Uh, oh. Chris lands in a big heap. So we round off our coverage of uh, tonight's playoff final with this brilliant shot right in front of their supporters. The best shot of all. The victorious Pirates on parade. <laughs>